Hello everyone, this is Tinrail. Welcome back. I'm going to go through and talk about some technical specs, some of the mods that I'm using, as well as setting them up to prepare for my career experience. Uh, one of the first things I was going to do was adjust the distant object enhancement, which shows the planets, which you can't actually see from here because the space center doesn't actually show you what is going on in the system. So I will just select the command pod, use my flag to make room for the cupcake. Perfect. So let's launch this and tweak some of the settings. And I'll talk about a few things. Well, night is... I didn't expect it to be night, but that's perfect for what I'm doing. Got this beautiful star system. Uh, there's the gas giant that I'm orbiting. Uh, as you can see, there are these other planets and bodies off into the distance that distant object enhancement can improve. Um, these are in my current system, so I can't see. Like I can see that Elu was way over there. Um, saturation 100%, flare size is minimum because the standard for initial settings have them all um, very high. It's, oh look, there's a planet there, but that's kind of unrealistic for what I wanted. Uh, so I was going to set the size setting down to 50%, 25% for flare brightness. I haven't ever actually encountered uh, debris from my previous launches in any game that I think I've played. It's uh, a different version, so I think that maybe I want to increase this up kind of high so I can even I see something shiny, I'm like, oh, there's part of my ship. Another thing is uh, I tried to rendezvous with a vessel that's maybe like seven kilometers away. And you can't even see it, so I'm hoping that this, I mean, 225 to, that's quite far. Uh, everything else I'm just going to leave the way it is. Uh, maybe I'll increase that brightness up a bit. Okay, perfect. Close that. Planet shine. I'm gonna set this up. Uh, let's go for high. 50 per second for updating. Let's just make it 25. Uh, I had been playing uh, 1.0 on Linux, and I was intending to record from Linux, but I encountered issues with getting recording done that made me have to switch to Windows, which I'm fine with. I haven't had a problem. I'm going to go through and make it so some of these will hide or be able to be hidden off of this bar here so they're not always in the way because I want to reduce the volume of clutter for my career mode. Um, with Linux, when I was using about 30... Mods. Sorry, I'm just reading and talking at the same time. Uh, it was using almost 5 gigs of RAM, even though it's using OpenGL. And the OpenGL version uh, for Windows with the 64 bit was using, using uh, 1.5 gigs less. The thing I noticed was that the uh, module manager was using three times as many module updates for the Windows version. Uh, I'm not sure if that is because of the 64-bit hack kind of to get it to run. I think that might be the case. But surprisingly enough, uh, not using OpenGL, I mean I'm only using about 5.7 Change this to 20 seconds. Uh, looks like it might actually be carrying over some settings from a previous game, so I don't have to tweak as much as I thought I was going to have to. Uh, one of the mods I have is GoTo, which lets me 
go to any of these locations without having to. Like if I want to go to the um, build a rocket, I don't have to go back to the space center from a craft out in the distance. This will let me show and hide one of these things. I don't know what the chatterer settings are. I haven't adjusted them. Uh, frequency 60 to 90 seconds. That sounds fine. Volume, I think it's probably a little high. Quindar, volume of beeps before and after the chatter. I guess I do want those to be in there. Let's make that 30. This is announcing it. Let's make it uh, a little bit higher. Beeps. I want beeps, but not frequently. Uh, every 43 seconds, beep volume, 25, pitch, too pitchy. Sample, three beeps. Uh, the SSTV is a really long, horrible, horrible noise that I do not want to listen to. Something else that I want to set up is, uh, I want to kind of prepare my future future exploration missions. I'm not sure exactly how far I'll advance, but I want to use transfer window planner to determine the most efficient times to go to some of the closer planets, uh, like Lave. Because I'm um, orbiting Sauna, I can't plot a course to Lave from Kerbin's orbit because I'll have to escape to have a better idea of what's going on. So I'll select Sauna. Select Sauna. And it's not letting me. I had this problem before. And. We'll go from sauna to lave. Should probably Kerbin is forty six million meters. So let's do let's say we push out to sixty thousand. Lathe. I think that early on I just want to do flybys, so I don't even really care what my orbit is. <laughs> if I can get picked up by that, I'll do uh, 2 million. By year, I think that I'm probably going to progress pretty fast. I'll say that by year, I think uh, a year is almost 400 days. So by year 2, day 200, bought it. If I can upgrade my tech enough, I can get there for almost 3,200. I'll add an alarm for that to let me know that I should be preparing It says that I'm already past. Oh, I should have my earliest departure be two hundred. We'll shift that a year. Want that? Oh, that's even less. So we'll delete that. Add it to alarm. Lave. It's interior. If we push out to lave. Go with the same time frame. That seems. Sauna. Lave. That seems really, really low. Uh, I can see there's a travel time of two years. I'm going to try to start out at least in the beginning having parallel missions instead of time accelerating several years in advance just to progress each mission at a time. I'll add that even though it seems kind of funky. 
Jewel is relatively close. I wonder if that's anywhere near its original position. I can't imagine that it is. I will see how much it would take if I plotted something in its time frame. This all seems fairly well. But it's also considering that I've taken off, you know, already at such a high uh, orbit in Sauna. I'll add that alarm as well. Okay. Now, one thing that I do want to do is make it so that there is not a lot of stuff on the screen so that you can enjoy the rockets as they're flying around or view the sky and not see MechJeb or Engineer or all these windows and buttons and all this stuff. That's why I wanted to be able to hide this so that I can just get rid of the alarm clock when I don't want to see it. Kerbal Engineer. This. Oh, I don't have an engineering thing on my ship. That would make sense. Let's revert to the vehicle assembly and fix that. Perfect. I may end up trying not to talk during loading screens so that I can cut them out. It's only a couple seconds, but if the only reason I'm saying things is to pass the time during a loading screen, I might as well just cut it out and speak in a different time. Um, these, I'm used to them up here, but I'm going to move them just because I am trying to consolidate everything in a more precise way. Sorry, I'm just going to an image of something I was looking at to reference. So for the first one, I do want the background on so that I can read the text over terrain. I want the apoapsis height. I want to keep the apoapsis and periapsis together. Time to apoapsis, time to periapsis. Um, let's also add some surface information to this window, uh, such as vertical speed is something that I'd like to be able to keep an eye on. Horizontal speed. That's something that is it's it's hard to deal with in Kerbal if you don't know your horizontal speed because the speed that it shows in the nav ball is a combination vector of both. And it's hard to tell how much velocity you have left to kill when it's switching back and forth between surface and orbital. And it's never fun scraping across the surface of something and going up into a million pieces. Well, unless you're a NASCAR fan, I guess. Um, vertical speed, horizontal speed. I think that I also want terminal velocity. And then we'll stick this. Uh, I don't have a pilot right now or a probe core that shows it, but there will be these buttons here, so I'm going to have to shift this over some. But I'm just going to pop that over there. And then I also want to edit the second one because it's covering these things up over here. I will have the biome at the top. So let's do biome. Surface is there. Impact time. Up. So biome, impact time. I did want a suicide burn delta V. But I was not. Is that a vessel? I wasn't getting that to work. So I, I think I'll just go with the altitude in which to start a uh, suicide burn. 
which varies because of fuel and atmosphere. It's, it's a very rough number. But impact time, suicide burn. Altitude, terrain is also something that I want. Uh, I shifted the speeds to that other one so I can get it over here. Uh, Delta V. I will go with um, total Delta Delta V as well as current. I could do this that does both of them, but I kind of want to have a rough estimate of the time it would take to burn through all of those at the same time. And then just because I will add a rendezvous that shows me the, um, the distance, it's not there because it hasn't been targeted, but if I were to target this asteroid, I might need targeting my, my station touch. Uh, but it would show up below here um, after I've done that. So I'll move this down here. And then if we hide these as well as not show Kerbal Engineer, this is a fairly sparse environment. And I think that. I'm probably ready to just start career mode now. Is there any other mod information I want to talk about? Um, going forward, like I said, I'm going to try doing missions in parallel instead of just fast forwarding through them one at a time. Um, I'm not going to be using MechJab to auto launch me anywhere or automate anything, but I'm also not going to be having life support or anything like that. I think I'm going to be trying to go in the middle. Um, Ernest is very, very close to the sun. This is something that Kill Ashley, um, the developer of the mod, has said they're not quite sure if it's even possible to get there yet. But Mo as new Moho. Moho is the originally in the stock is the closest planet to the sun. It's something that I have flown by but never been able to land on or get to because the time it would take for the duration of my nuclear engines to get me down to get captured by orbit was longer than my duration flying by it. But this looks like it will be a fun system to explore. It is at an odd tilt, the entire system is. But I think that about covers it for now. Like this video if you're interested in, I don't know, I guess this wasn't really technical, but uh, in the future I will probably be building most of my rockets in these kinds of videos. Um, so let me know if it's something that you would be interested in, and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.